Good morning, good people. So I feel like I haven't done a pet pairing video in a really long time and I was really itching to do one. So we are going to be pairing some pet palettes today. I'm going to start off by applying, well, I've already applied my eyeshadow primer and my brows and I'm going to take the strobe cream from MAC and I'm going to apply a little bit of that underneath my eyes to hydrate them and also on my cheekbones. So remember last week when I was very enthusiastically telling you how I am going to be scoring the <laughs> new classic base brush from Sonia G and I was demoing the mini base brush which was also going to be featured in her uh, new collection with a longer like a handle. It was not meant to be. Not even a little bit. I went on the website at exactly the time that the product was supposed to be released and I don't usually have like the time to be there at the exact moment something is released. I will make exceptions for very few brands. But you know I was at home and I thought you know I'm just going to give it a shot. And with Sonia you never know because her products tend to be of fairly limited quantity. So I was on the website, I... At first I thought something's wrong with my Wi-Fi, so I went on for a minute or two to <laughs> try to fix my Wi-Fi until I realized that it's not my Wi-Fi and it's the Beautylish website being a bitch and being super slow. Probably they were having a lot of traffic because of the release from Sonia. So I was able to add the classic base to my uh, card. But then I decided last minute, and that was probably my biggest mistake, but I decided last minute that it's not worth for me to, you know, pay the customs and all on just that one brush. And I went back to get a backup of the mini base. And by the time that the stupid website finally had loaded the mini base into my uh, cart, the classic one was gone and it said that it was sold out. And at first I thought, the fuck? Is that a glitch? What? Because it was literally seven minutes after the official release time. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I started looking through the individual brushes and I could see them like going one by one out of stock. And then I realized that probably like half the world was trying to score these brushes. I don't fucking know. But they were gone super quickly and I did not get my chance. I'm going to grab my Dior Face and Body Foundation now. So I don't fucking know what happened there. Um, there was a set featuring all the five brushes. There were the five brushes individually. And as one would expect, people were more interested in the individual brushes because usually sets are the kind of thing that you buy if you're like pretty sure you're going to use all the brushes. And personally for me the set has like, I don't want the set. I would never buy the set just for like one or two brushes. I know a lot of people did because of FOMO in the end, because the brush set was available for the longest time. But I was like, nope, I'm signing off, that's it, I'm done. Also because I, if you guys remember, I had said after the Divine Rolls 2 release from Pat McGrath that I am never participating in stressful releases that sell out in three minutes. So I just like logged off the website and I was like, fuck it, whatever. I did follow a little bit what was going on via Instagram because I knew that I must not be the only person to whom this is happening because I was also on WhatsApp with Bia and she was trying to buy the same two brushes that I was as well. By the way, I'm using my little Fupa brush here just, just to remind myself that I already have a perfectly fine foundation brush that I enjoy. Um, so life will go on without the classic base. Uh, but she didn't manage to score the brushes either. Of course, Instagram was also full of people who were like, what is going on? I put uh, things in my cart and then by the time the website finally allowed me to check out, everything was out of my cart. So, luckily Sonia is like a very... Um, she seems like a very nice person, so I think she took it very personally and she didn't expect that the brushes are going to sell out this quickly. Which honestly surprises me because I'm like... Her range of brushes doesn't really have many brushes that you can use with liquid and cream products. So even your basic foundation, like she doesn't, she has one brush that you can use, I think, for foundation. And that brush has been out of stock for the longest time. So people have been waiting for her to release something they can use at the very least with foundation. And now that cream and like uh, liquid products are so incredibly popular, it was clear that this is going to be a very successful release. But apparently she underestimated how many people were going to be buying these brushes. I'm taking my Chanel Soleil Tender Chanel bronzer and she made too little stock. Anyway, the good news is that she's going to be restocking already in the end of July. So I'm just going to try my luck again, see how it goes and if it doesn't go then I'm just going to give up. But hopefully she makes more stock this time, seeing the demand is pretty high. 
a lot of you reached out on Instagram, you were very sweet trying to help or trying to console me or saying that the same thing happened to you. So, you know, we're all in this together, which makes this so much more bearable. In other news, like completely switching topic now, I am now fully equipped with my very own 5G. Bill and I are like this, we're on the same wavelength. I got my second jab on Monday, so that was two days ago. And to be honest with you, I didn't really have much side effects from both vaccinations. I'm going to take Dante's Dream now from Lisa Eldridge. Uh, yesterday when I woke up I thought, hmm, I feel a bit more tired than usual, but I didn't really feel like I am tired enough not to go to work. So in the end I did go to work and in the like very late evening hours I did feel like little shivers and like muscle pains through my body but honestly nothing really remarkable happened past that like I just felt a little bit of discomfort in the evening hours and mostly like in the late afternoon hours but past that I was fine this morning I woke up feeling just peachy I have come to the conclusion that I really enjoy this blush when applied with a brush I really think it has a more airbrushed finish when you apply it with a brush as compared to your fingers. For highlighter I'm also going to go with uh, my liquid highlighter from Daniel Sandler. I'm just going to mix the two that I have from my little set. I'm just going to mix the two colors sort of in like a 50-50 ratio just because um, I like the effect of the two being mixed. So anyway, um, I didn't experience much side effects and I'm like mildly worried about it. I was I was actually happy that yesterday I experienced at least something because I, I thought, well, finally my immune system is doing something. Because up to that point I really was like, immune system, what are you doing? And she's like, hmm, what? Covid? Hmm? Don't know her. Couldn't care less. I was quite happy that she did something in the end. I am going to just apply this with my fingers and then lightly blend it out using a little highlighter brush that I have here from Zoeva. Oh, I love, love, love the formula of Daniel Sandler. It's just so beautiful. I'm just really happy that it's done. I'm really happy that uh, life is finally opening up uh, in the Netherlands as of Saturday. We don't even have to wear the stupid face masks anymore when we go like shopping or to the restaurant or the only places we have to wear the face masks are still like public transport, um, airports, the airplane and stuff like that. But other than that, we are removing the face masks rule. I'm really hoping that the hospital where I work is also going to like loosen up the rules a little bit because I just absolutely hate walking around with that thing all day. So for today's pet pairing video we're not going to be doing any sort of like a groundbreaking look but I'm going to do a little something something with subversive and risque rose and since neither of the two really offers me a very good transition shade I am going to start off my look with a statuesque, my single in statuesque over here just on a little blending brush like this also I really really wanted to apologize you can probably see it like, like right there behind me that green laundry bin usually I remove it out of your sight because it you know I think it's not nice sometimes I will forget it most times I will remove it but today I left it on purpose because I'm just like out of sheer principle super irritated so let me tell you I probably don't have to tell you much rather than my husband's responsible for the laundry nowadays but let me tell you the, the long story so a few months ago I was complaining how much I despise doing laundry and the process I despise the most when I do laundry is like having to hang up the clothes and then having to fold them and put them away because it just takes so long and it's such a drag and I just don't enjoy the process and at the same time my husband was complaining how much he hates to mop and we have like everyone has their like chores in the house and like mopping was one of his chores so I told him well I don't mind mopping one bit and he said I don't mind doing the laundry one bit so why don't we swap oh I think I've completely forgot to powder my face you guys Pfft. okay let's go back and like powder at least the t-zone perimeter because I'm too late for like cheeks and anything but I'm just going to like quickly use my hourglass ambient lighting powder to powder right here on my forehead, my nose and at first I thought I had won the lottery because I was finally like off of one of the most awful chores that I could think of in the house I'm going to take a little pencil brush now and the Risky Rose Quad and I'm going to go into the deep brown shade I really really love that shade 
and things were going well for a while. Oh, and by the way, I did not give him permission to wash my fancy clothes, so like my work clothes and like shirts and stuff that he would probably not do a good job at like washing at the correct program. I was like, you don't have to do that. So I still do part of the laundry. I do my fancy laundry. Um, but I was super happy to be rid of the rest. However, because my husband's a very relaxed human and he does, he's, he's not the least bothered by the fact that this bin has been there with clothes that are folded and required to be put back into their place for like at least a week now. Whereas it gets on my nerves so bad, but I out of sheer principle refused to do it for him because the whole point of this was that I wasn't going to do it because I really hate it. So, there you have it. Ugh. I just really love this shade. It's like super easy to work with and it's so like deep and it feels like so silky soft and despite how deep it is, it takes no time to apply it and blend it out. I love this shade. I'm going to just apply a little bit of my Pixie Epoxy Glitter Glue from Firini. For now I'm sticking to the Risqué Rose Quad and I'm going to go into this gorgeous shade, the name of which is Life on Mars. I always forget this, uh, the name of this shade, but it is such a beautiful, like, bronzy, coppery, peachy orange shade. And it has the most gorgeous texture to it because it has sort of like a putty texture, really beautiful, and it's just such a classy neutral. And now for the fun part, I'm going to take this aversive palette and I will be taking this shade here, the shade VR Pink, just on my finger like this, it's just such a gorgeous shade. And I'm going to apply it over top of life on Mars, what were you thinking? Just to add a bit more sparkle. These shades have like a very similar vibe to them, with the only difference being that Life on Mars is like a very smooth, creamy metallic, and VR Pink is of course one of Mother's topper shades. And I just think the two are going to play off of each other really well. And if you thought we were done, you would be wrong, because now we're going to go back into the Risqué Raw Squad and apply also the tiniest, tiniest bit of lavenderic. So I'm just going to take a few flakes like this and try to very like gently tap them right here in the very center of the lid. And it, it's not like it's going to like do much. None of the shades is going to overtake any of the other. They're just going to play really well together to create more sparkle and dimension. I'm going to take just the tiniest bit of this dark brown that I first applied um, from the Risqué Rose Quad and intensify it here in the outer corner where I have lost a little bit due to layering of the metallic shades. I've really been enjoying a little bit more of like a highlight here on my brow bones. I'm going to take the Skin Show shade from this Aversive palette and run the tiniest bit of that at the very highest point here underneath my brow. And now I'm going to still be sticking to the subversive palette and for my inner corner I think I'm just going to do a layering of the Skin Show shade together with the Astral Pink shade. I don't like to use the Astral Pink shade on its own because I don't really like the texture of that shade and I don't think it sticks to my skin very well or looks very flattering when it's on its own. So I like to pair it up with one of the Skin Show shades. I don't know, if you guys have one of like the newer Subversive and Sublime palettes from Pat McGrath, because the Astral Pink shade is featured in both of those, can you please let me know how your shade, like what's the texture of your eyeshadow, because mine feels like sandpaper, literally, and not in a good way. Like, uh, Lavenderic feels like sandpaper a little bit too, but you can pick out the product and you can apply it on your lid beautifully, whereas this one is just so hard to pick up and do anything with, so I truly am curious. I'm now layering it over top of the Skin Show shade. I'm going to take Subversive and apply this metallic brown shade all over my lower lash line. I was thinking of applying a Gigabyte, but I think it might be too, too colorful. Or should I apply a little bit of this and then just a touch of Gigabyte right here? Oh, let's do that. I'm going to apply the metallic brown here in the outer part of the lower lash line and I'm going to save a tiny bit of space for Gigabyte there. 
in the inner part. Alright, now I'm going to take a little bit of Gigabyte, the beautiful antique green gold, and apply a touch of that right here. Oh, this shade just gets my motor running, it's so beautiful. Like this, just for a touch of something different. It's not going to add too much, but just the tiniest bit, just being present there. Final look, I hope you like it. I was actually going to go for Pink Ultranas from Pat on my lips, because that's usually the lipstick that I pair this shirt with, but... When I put the tiniest bit of it on my lips, paired with the look and the rest, it didn't really it didn't really click with me, so I decided to go for a different lipstick. And one that I haven't used in a really long time, but it's really one of my absolute favorites, and that is the shade Ghosted from Colourpop. Unfortunately, that lipstick has been long discontinued. Of course, in the center of my lips, to pair up with the eyes, I had to apply the tiniest bit of Lavendering Lust Gloss, just to give a little bit of like that cool sheen just in the center of the lips. And that is pretty much all. I hope you enjoyed the look. I actually really enjoyed the final result and especially that little like final touch of Gigabyte here on the lower lash line because I really was looking for ways to incorporate Gigabyte in this look without it overtaking the look, which it would normally do because it is such a, you know, outstanding shade. Anyhow, let me know what you thought about this pet pairing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!